I'm Melissa Rose here with 1986 Mets World Series champion, Roger McDowell. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Well, thank you. It's, it's really a pleasure to be here. Good. We're so excited to have you. Um, I want to start with you being just a complete prankster in that clubhouse. Obviously, everyone knows you pulled a lot of gags mm -hmm. um, during your time with the Mets. What was your favorite prank you ever Probably pulled? Probably the hot foot. Um, it was something that I, I learned from Howard Johnson, uh -huh. um, better known as Hojo uh, in, in Mets world. Uh, he, he learned it in Detroit with the Tigers, mm -hmm. and after he got traded over here, uh, he showed me how to do the hot foot, and I just kind of made it a little bit better. Okay. Um, you take a, a book matches, and there's there's two sets of matches that are um, stapled together, and you take the staple out, wrap it around the cigarette, which is basically your fuse. Okay. And you wrap around the cigarette, and then you got to go to a camera guy and get some gaff tape, and that is uh, sticky tape. That, okay. But you can't get it too tight, or else you'll, you'll uh, choke off the fuse. So it's it's, uh, it's 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 a real it's, science project. It, it is a process that you really have to. You know, it takes years to learn mm -hmm. um, and to perfect, and so I was able to do that. And, and then you use uh, the gaffer's tape as well to put it on the back of the shoe. We tried gum. Um, okay. You know, Howard came up to me you know, from the Detroit Tigers, and they said, you know, maybe gum works. And I said, okay, but it, it, it wouldn't get sticky enough, and it would fall off when you guys were running. And that's what okay. you want to try ultimately do is, is have the hot foot attached so that when they get on the field that it goes off. Interesting. Yeah. Um, anyone in particular have a reaction to the hot foot that you enjoyed the most or that you wanted to do it to most often? Probably our first base coach, Bill Robinson, uh -huh. who was uh, also the hitting instructor. Um, he didn't like to be called a hitting coach. He was our hitting instructor, but uh, he was the challenge. He, he dared both Howard and I uh, that we would not get him, and so it become, became an ultimate challenge to try so and get him. So then you had to get him. So we had to get him. That was yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I was really a big fan of Upside Down Man. Mm -hmm. First of all, where to come from, and second of all, how many people did it take to get you in the in the full-on attire for um, go? First of all, where it came from was I think I was watching some kind of uh, Halloween show, and I had seen somebody with this costume up, upside down. I thought it'd be pretty cool. I had gone to a mask shop, a masquerade shop, um, and and bought a mask, mm -hmm. and so I figured out how would I get that mask upside down, me in the uniform. And actually, going on the field wasn't part of the, the plan, but uh, there was, was probably Bill Robinson again that, yeah. that challenged me to go on the field. And, and so this was right before game time in LA at Dodger Stadium and um, did that. And it was, uh, I don't know, looking back, it was kind of goofy, but at the time it was quite enjoyable. Goofy and enjoyable yeah. are usually one and the same. Right. Um, your personality did not stop shining in the clubhouse. You had quite a few television appearances. There was Seinfeld, there was MTV's Rock and Jock, there was America's Funniest People. What was your favorite? Looking back, uh, yeah, probably Seinfeld, just because of the institution that it, it, it has become and um, how popular it is, and not only here, but I do get residual checks. Well, there you yeah, go. I think it's like thirteen dollars and fifty-two cents. Uh, but not a bad burger. I mean, it's thirteen dollars and fifty-two cents. Yeah. You know? And so, um, and they, it's worldwide. But you know, when I do go places, and somebody may or may not recognize me, it's usually in the order of Seinfeld, MTV, and then my baseball career. So okay. I'm very, very happy that uh, I got to do those other things. All right. Well, for the Seinfeld fans. We need to know, were you the second spitter? See, that's the thing is I, I can't divulge that information. You're going to leave us hanging yeah, for this many more the, years? Ever. Forever. <laughs> Forever. Um, but uh, it was uh, it was a quite interesting show, so I'll let uh, people draw their own conclusions. <laughs> All right. It's still under, under, under investigation. All right. We have not made any no. final conclusions yet. I'm, I'm kind of moment. None yet. OK. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, Jerry Seinfeld, huge Mets fan. Um, Kevin James, huge Mets fan. Chris Rock, huge Mets fan. There are so many comedians who really have grown to love this team. Right. As a big prankster yourself, do you have a favorite? Um, uh, I don't want to, no, not really. Um, I know Chris Rock was really huge on the scoreboard when, uh, yes. during the games and, and getting fans um, really um, enthused. Mm -hmm. um, the Three Stooges, too, um, was pretty cool. So. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but there was a, a little skit there with the Three Stooges. And it was uh, Keith Hernandez, who was one of his favorite. And so it, it, 
we won a lot of games that year, and so we got year. to see the Three Stooges a lot, and we, went, we got to watch Keith uh, laugh a lot. Love it. And speaking of that year, you were the winning pitcher in Game 7 of the 1986 World Series. What did that mean at the time, and then how, over the years, looking back, you know, over 30 years later, what is that feeling like now? At the time, it, it was just that we won the baseball game, uh, we, and we won the World Championship. Um, because of how that season went and how much emotion was in that season, uh, you really don't get the, the full understanding of what that means. Mm -hmm. As the years passed, and <laughs> truth be known, Jesse saved me. Um, you know, we were co-closers at the time, but I had come in with a three-run lead. I gave up two runs, and the go uh, tying run was on second base. Jesse came in, got out of the inning, which I still had the lead, so I'm going to get the win. But Jesse ended up saving me that inning, the eighth inning, and then closed it out in the ninth inning. But, um, you know, when you look in the record books now, it doesn't say that. Okay. It's, it just says. It just says you won. It says W McDowell, <laughs> and so I think it's it's, it's pretty cool yeah. that uh, you know, one that I was able to play in World Series, win a World Series, and also. Um, be able to say that I was the winning pitcher in, in the uh, deciding game. Absolutely, and obviously that is a really cool memory. When you think about your entire career with the Mets, did you say that's your favorite, or is there another moment for yeah, you? Yeah, that really and uh, being, you know, being being part of a, a ball club that won 108 games in the regular season, 116, 116 games over the course of uh, of the year to get uh, through the playoffs in the World Championship. Um, the, the other part was probably uh, the Astros game, game six, uh, and, and personally, from a personal standpoint, pitching five innings and giving up no runs, knowing that in Houston, um, if they score a run, we lose the game and we got to face Mike Scott the next day. So um, that was a very pressure-filled game. But again, it was everybody was tired, everybody was emotionally drained, and you just continue to play the game. But uh, you know, fortunately, we came out on top. Yeah, I know you guys had a lot of fun on that '86 team. Was yep. there a particular off the field moment that you really think of as your best memory or your favorite time with those group of guys? No, I, you know, I think most of our fun was on the field. It was winning games um, and, and the fun and the, and. The, and the, uh, the friendships, mm -hmm. uh, the camaraderie that we had, the, the guys from different areas of the world and different areas of the country and different ages, and everybody just came together and, and gelled and, and molded and uh, fortunately uh, was able to win a world championship. Amazing. Well, thank you so much thank for you. sitting down with us, taking the time. Mets fans, we will see you back at City Field very soon.